So last year I did a comparison on this channel with the GoPro Hero 12 against the DJI Action 4, and DJI kind of pretty much won most of the categories. And that's where this next company, Insta360, has come along with the Ace Pro. Now this one has 8K internal recording in a small action camera, it has this flip screen, an AI processor that does incredible things because these two have pretty much the exact same sensor size so we've got a lot to get through and i really want to see the biggest differences between these uh, the timestamps will obviously below so we've got a lot to get through so let's get it What's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic in 2024. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna to be comparing the DJI Action 4 and the Insta360 Ace Pro. Now, we will talk about the specs first and then we can go through a whole bunch of the testings to compare these two to see which one actually takes the win. So the Insta360 Ace Pro has a 2.4 inch touch flip screen. It has a one over 1.3 inch sensor. It has an f2.6 aperture, is able to film up to 8K at 24 frames per second and 4K at 120 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. It can take 48 megapixel stills, has a 1650 milliamp hour battery, waterproof of up to 10 meters, all in a body of 179.8 grams. And you can get the Ace Pro now on the website for 449 US. Now the Action 4 has a 2.25 inch rear screen and a 1.4 inch front screen. It also has that same 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, has an f2.8 aperture, has the ability to record up to 4K at 120 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. Has a 1770 milliamp hour battery, waterproof of up to 18 meters, and all this weighs in a body of 145 grams, and you can pick this up for 469 US. Now, as you saw by the specs earlier, this Ace Pro has 8K internal, and that is a really interesting spec. Now, it only does 8K at 24 frames per second, no other frames, but uh, obviously the DJI Action 4 doesn't do 8K. It only maxes out at 4K 120, which the Ace Pro actually does as well. But what's the difference between the 8K in this and the 4K in the Action 4? So right from the start, the 8K looks incredible on the Insta360. There is so much resolution, there's so much detail in the image, and the noise is actually quite low on this, which is pretty incredible in comparison to the 4K on the Action 4. So when it comes to comparing the footage between these two cameras, it really does come down to what you do prefer. It is subjective. I'm just trying to give you my objective opinion. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well. So if we are to have a look at the image quality when it comes to the 4K footage out of both of these cameras in 25, 50, and 100 frames per second, it does seem like there is more detail when it comes to the Ace Pro. It certainly renders the image just a little bit better in my opinion. It's not as digitally sharp. It just has more resolution because of that higher resolution sensor. So I did have to get out of that last location because it's absolutely bucketing down rain. But when it comes to dynamic range, that is the one interesting thing about the Ace Pros because when it does sort of uh, kick into that HDR mode, you just can retain so much more of the highlights and obviously it brings up the shadows. It really depends on what kind of look you're going for, but you can obviously change that in post-production. But it is really cool how much of the highlights it actually does retain. Whereas the obviously the Action 4, it does start to blow out the highlights quite easily. But if you do obviously change the frame rates to a lot higher, the HDR mode doesn't get activated in the Ace Pro, and then the dynamic range is very similar. But it does seem that the new AI processor in the Ace Pro allows for higher dynamic range because of that added processing. So now slow motion isn't necessarily much needed in a lot of these action cameras when it comes to 240 frames per second, but they both do 1080p at 240 frames per second. And which one actually looks better? So both of these are at five times slow motion, which is 1080p at 240 frames per second. And you can see the DJI just looks a little bit too sharp, maybe not as much resolution, whereas the Insta360 does look a little bit softer, but cleaner. It really depends on which one you prefer. I personally prefer the Insta360, uh, but they are both pretty average when it comes to you know image quality. And you would probably use these sparingly. 
How are we? My name's James. Uh, I've been flying FPV for about two and a half years. We're flying with the Luma 55 here today. It's a five and a half inch freestyle quad. Um, we've got the Action 4 mounted at the moment um, and it flew real nice, nice and punchy. Uh, could not hardly feel it at all uh, when I'm flying. Uh, we started with the Insta and it was much heavier. I could definitely feel it was on there. Um, felt like I couldn't do as much tighter turns and more punchy than what it normally is. Um, that's probably because I fly with the Hero 11 Mini, which is, as you can see, significantly smaller and much lighter. But yeah, overall, pretty good, pretty good flying. So if you are considering flying these on FPV drones, obviously the smaller the action camera, the better it's most likely going to be because it obviously drops the overall weight of the drone, which allows you to be more punchy, allows you to have better acceleration, turning, all those kind of things. It depends on what kind of flying you do. If you like cinematic flying, it'll be nice and smooth and controlled, which is perfectly fine for the Insta360. But if you want faster, the Insta360 probably isn't the best in this situation. Now, if we are to assess the low light video capabilities of the Ace Pro and the Action 4, we have side-by-sides here. Now, they have the same size sensor, so the performance should be pretty similar, but the Ace Pro does seem to perform better because of the internal processor, sure. It does have more noise suppression, so it doesn't look as grainy and potentially not as sharp. But in my opinion, I prefer the look of the Ace Pro. It is cleaner, but one of the biggest things you need to focus on is the stability in low light. Because once you get to low light, you need to crank that shutter. And you can't crank that shutter too high because of obviously cutting back on the light. So the Ace Pro has a specific stabilization setting when you are in pure video to be able to get really nice smooth low light shots and it doesn't make it look like the background is dancing around because of that stabilization that's been happening in camera. And this is also where you can see the dynamic range difference between the Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Action 4. You can see the signs up there that's a little bit more clearer on the Ace Pro than it is on the Action 4. So that's pretty good and I love the image that's coming out of this Ace Pro. Now 4K is probably gonna be one of the most used when it comes to these action cameras. They both do 4K at 120 frames per second, but one of the greatest things about the Ace Pro is that you can actually double tap the screen and it will zoom in and it's almost like a lossless zoom. Because it's an 8K sensor, it'll still give you a 4K readout. So it's essentially just punching in two times, giving you extra reach, but more resolution at that reach because of that downsampling. And it's obviously no longer downsampling, it's giving you 4K and it looks great. Like you can literally see here on the crane that the words up the top there and the words on the building is so much easier to read out on the Ace Pro than it is on the Action 4. So. It could actually be quite beneficial if you do just need to punch in, if you're gonna be using this for vlogging, for traveling, anything that you need to punch in just a little bit without losing resolution. The Insta360 Ace Pro does an incredible job there. So we got to talk about the elephant in the room as well. And yeah, that's that flip screen. How, what's the durability like? How can I sort of contest of how long this is going to last? Will it break off? Is there any weak points in? I mean, look, in all honesty, it looks pretty good, but that's where you obviously just close it. It has these little clasps on the bottom here where it actually locks it in so you can't accidentally lift it up. You have to press these two little clasps and then it will lift out, which is really good. And to be honest, I think it's perfectly fine. Like I said, if you're gonna be throwing this around, lock the screen, but if you actually wanna be vlogging with it, you can flip that screen up and then you've got a larger, you know, 2.4 inch screen rather than just that 1.4 inch or whatever size screen on the front of the Action 4. So you just got so much more to reframe yourself. And when it comes to vlogging, I mean, it could be a fairly decent option. And also with this flip screen, you have the added benefit of having lower angles. Uh, obviously that front flip screen, you can put it to the back like a normal action camera. There are so many different ways you can actually mount this and it just gives you so much more versatility than a lock screen on the back. 
Now, one of the things that Insta360 got right that GoPro didn't get right is that magnetic clip that DJI has. Now, that magnetic clip is phenomenal with the DJI. They obviously came out with it first. It is so easy to do that whole quick release and you know clamp it back on. And Insta360 has done their own version that's very, very similar. But the one thing Insta360 do offer is this extra clip that you can actually buy which I think is the best because it has a tripod mount on the bottom. The standard finger mount can actually fold away magnetically and it just, it works perfectly fine. It has this little lock button that you can actually lock the hooks in. It is fantastic. Now, one major accessory that is really cool with the Insta360 is actually this watch. So this watch actually allows me to monitor the image, but I can also change any of the settings on the ace pro which is incredibly efficient because if i want to see if it's still recording or if i want to change to 4k 50 4k 60 4k 120 whatever setting i need to change i can do that directly on this watch which it's just it is so handy Now, I guess one of the downsides that some people are talking about is uh, the screen. It is a non-removable screen, so if you do accidentally crack the screen, break it, I mean, you're probably going to have to get it sent away and replaced, whereas, you know, the Action 4, you can actually remove the screen, put filters on, but I assume that it's really high-quality glass and you won't be able to break it very easily, but I can't contest for that. I don't know what the durability is like. But I guess one of the interesting things is they're actually offering a free no questions asked maintenance for like damaged lenses for the first year of all ACE users, which is pretty interesting and really uh, impressive that they're actually keeping to that. So you do actually have that assurance there, but it really does just depend on your shooting style and what kind of situations you're actually gonna be putting these in. But I guess also you still actually can put filters on the front of the Insta360 Pro, which you can find on their website, which would just be magnetic clip on one. So, I mean, you take that either a pro or a con, it really depends on how you look at this. Now we can't talk about the Ace Pro without talking about the new AI processor that's in there. These two have the exact same size sensor and they should perform pretty much exactly the same when it comes to image quality and low light performance, but that's where that AI processor comes into play because with the low light mode and the increased dynamic range that this actually gives, it's incredible. The Ace Pro actually beats the Action 4 when it comes to low light and the Action 4 obviously smashed the Hero 12 when it comes to low light, but the Ace Pro literally takes the win in every single, you know, section here because the low light performance is better when it comes to brightness and clarity, but the dynamic range is still there in the Ace Pro. Lights aren't blown out. You've got so much more detail and information when it comes to, you know, low light and using this in a vlogging scenario, uh, which is really, really handy. Now, there is a pretty interesting thing when it comes to AI highlights. Essentially, it will literally clip the best clips from your video literally for you, it'll flag it. And it would say, hey, these are the best parts of your video, and I flagged it, check it out. And it's kind of just makes that whole editing process a little bit easier. So if you've got, you know, hours and hours of footage, you don't have to keep scrubbing through to try and find the best bits. It will try and find the best bits for you, but is it accurate? Really depends on the situation, but I mean, it's better to have it than, uh, and not need it than need it and obviously not have it. Now, one of the most interesting things when it comes to the AI processor is the gesture control. This is, I believe, the first action camera that's got gesture control. We are starting to see these in gimbals when it comes to the AI tracking, but essentially you just hold your hand up like here because it does have face tracking and it will actually start recording, which is really cool. If you uh, obviously can't hit that record button um, and you are too far away from it, you can obviously do the same gesture control to stop it. But also when it comes to photo mode, as well you do the peace sign and it will do a countdown timer and take a photo so you don't actually have to you know set the countdown timer hit the record button run back and then obviously pose for the photo you can literally just be in front of the action camera while you're in photo mode do the peace sign and take that photo so it is actually quite handy when it comes to these things and that's what that added processor does do is all these extra features which just it just makes it so much more valuable than having just a standard action camera. 
Now, an interesting one, but one that I probably won't use, but some people might actually use, is you can actually continue recording from a previous clip. So you literally find the clip if you have uh, you know, have a specific scene where you're scootering along a specific trail and then you do your whole day and you come back to that trail, you can find that clip and continue to record on that clip or if you want to keep all your b-roll clips together you can literally just have a whole bunch of b-roll clips and then you can have a whole bunch of a-roll clips and it's just makes it so much easier when it comes to organizing in post-production but it really depends on your workflow but if you can actually try and work that within your workflow it does make it so much easier Now, because Insta360 has a pretty established lineup when it comes to cameras, there's so much you can actually do when you access the app. And this is probably one of the added benefits if you do go into some of these extra features like AI warp, some time-lapse features, you know, removing the stick, you can actually do these within the app, which these generally aren't my cup of tea, but will really suit a lot of different situations. Whereas the DJI app doesn't give you as many features as this one does. So now when it comes to stills, we really shouldn't be talking about stills when it comes to action cameras because predominantly they're videography cameras. They're built for action sports. They're built for, I guess, sometimes these days, traveling and vlogging. But sometimes you want to take some stills and you've got 48 megapixel stills on the Ace Pro, which is quite high resolution and pretty incredible. And obviously just with the Action 4, you've only got 12 megapixel stills. So you do have a more uh, high resolution in the Ace Pro and more stills capabilities there, but you still can record raw information off that. I'm pretty sure it's DNG raw with both of them. So uh, you can do a little bit of color grading and post-processing there, but the Ace Pro will have to take the win when it comes to stills. Now, if you are into a little bit of snorkeling, both of these will do perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure the Ace Pro does up to 10 meters and the Action 4 does up to 18 meters. But if you do have a dive case for both of these, you can go you know, really deep when it comes to scuba diving. But basic snorkeling, these both uh, waterproofed very well and you won't have any issues whatsoever. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Comment below which one you actually prefer, which one you think is better. Are DJI, you know, going in the right direction? Are Insta360 going in the right direction by trying to push the innovation levels and just, you know, bringing something a little bit different out there and bringing something that's actually quite high quality? So let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's get it.